start with the basics, although they have been mentioned already. Why is it important to focus on intervention coverage? It's important because we have life-saving interventions, but they are reaching too few women and children. This chart comes from the Lancet series on childhood pneumonia and diarrhea that came out last week, last month, and it shows that across the 75 countries that account for over 95% of deaths among women and children, coverage is low, too low, for most of the effective interventions that could save child lives from these two infectious diseases. We must reach these children and their mothers, but to do so, we must know who they are and where they are. Thus, accurate measurement of intervention coverage is the basis for effective programs that save lives. Most high burden countries rely on two international survey programs to measure coverage and to produce the information needed to guide policies and programs. The Demographic and Health Surveys program supported by USAID and the Multiple Indicator Cluster Surveys supported by UNICEF. Both programs have outstanding technical staff and years of experience, but the science of coverage measurement continues to evolve, and it is not easy, as you will hear. The work we're presenting to you today was conducted under the auspices of the Child Health Epidemiology Reference Group, or CHIRG. CHIRG was established in 2001 to advise WHO and UNICEF on issues relating to evidence in MNCH epidemiology. The CHIRG Working Group on Improving Coverage Measurement began in 2009, bringing together a core group of technical experts, including the leadership of both DHS and MIX. This picture includes only some of the working group members, but gives you just a little idea about how we felt the day the last paper was accepted for publication <laughs> in the collection. We know how to congratulate ourselves, and we plan to do so again right after this session. <laughs> the collection includes work commissioned and supported by the working group, but also reflects important contributions by other scientists and organizations. The scope of the work is limited to measurement of coverage through household surveys and for proven MNCH interventions. It includes not only a set of validation research studies, but also measurement reviews and commissioned papers on methodological issues, such as assessing equity in coverage, addressing survey error, and the use of coverage indicators in global monitoring. Throughout the process of preparing the collection, each paper was subjected to intensive internal working group review and then, as Jocelyn has said, by peer review through the PLOS Med system. <laughs> it's okay, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> I want to highlight findings in three areas this morning, and I'm going to try hard not to steal the thunder of the other collection authors who will present. The first set of findings relates to the validity of coverage estimates based on respondent reports. The second relates to potential strategies for improving coverage measurement. And the third, which I will touch on only briefly, relates to cross-cutting methodological issues. The collection includes six original research studies that examine the validity of respondents' reports. Usually, that means mothers reporting on the interventions that they received or that their children received. With the exception of the study on PMTCT, all researchers used the same basic design, which was originally developed by Harry Campbell um, for use in the studies of pneumonia diagnosis and treatment in Bangladesh and Pakistan. So here it is. In step one, Trained researchers observe health providers as they deliver interventions to women and children. These observations are supplemented by health service records where data quality permits. Step two is a waiting period that roughly correlates to the recall period used in the DHS and mixed surveys. For example, DHS survey field workers ask mothers about symptoms of pneumonia in their child during the last two weeks. So the re researchers in this study also waited two weeks before moving to the next step. In step three, 
trained field workers visit the households of the very same women and children who were observed in step one, and they administer a survey questionnaire. They do three kinds of things. First, they ask the DHS and mixed questions exactly as they occur in the core questionnaires for the survey programs. Then, they ask additional questions. These might be questions about specific services or interventions, or questions um, that we believe were constructed in ways that might help the mothers remember better. In some studies, the field workers also introduced specific strategies or materials designed to improve mother's recall. I'm going to let the other presenters tell you about some of those. Finally, in step four, the answers provided by the mothers are compared to what actually happened in step one to determine the validity of respondent reports. I need to introduce you to some basic terminology that you're going to hear repeatedly this morning. We use three metrics in these studies. The first is the sensitivity of recall, which refers to the proportion of caregivers who correctly said that they or their, ch their child received an intervention. The specificity of recall refers to the proportion of caregivers who correctly said that an intervention was not received. And the accuracy of recall is a combination of sensitivity and specificity. And basically, it refers to the proportion of mothers who got it right. The collection includes research studies of this type, adapted, of course, in five intervention areas. Emergency C-sections in Ghana and Dominican Republic, interventions delivered around the time of birth in Mozambique, pneumonia diagnosis and treatment in Pakistan and Bangladesh, malaria diagnosis and treatment in Zambia, and interventions across the continuum of care in China. The results shed new light on the accuracy of coverage measurement through household surveys. As you can see in this table of selected results, there are important differences in the accuracy of reporting, first by intervention, for example, ranging from 56% accuracy for the recall of one antenatal visit in China to 90% accuracy for the recall of C-sections, also in China. There are also differences in recall accuracy by setting. For example, you can see here that the accuracy of recall for emergency C-sections is only 65% in the Dominican Republic and 80% in Ghana. You're going to hear from Harry Campbell in a few minutes that there were also important differences between urban and rural mothers in Bangladesh in the accuracy of the reports of pneumonia treatment for their children. A positive finding is that we are measuring some interventions very well. For example, C-sections, but also ACT, ACT treatment for childhood malaria, and there are others. We also report in the collection on structural challenges in measuring coverage for MNCH interventions. For example, obtaining adequate denominators for these measurements is not easy, especially for relatively rare events such as C-sections or pneumonia. Even larger denominators are needed when we want to do analyses of coverage levels for specific age groups or by sex or socioeconomic quintile. We hear many calls for the increased use of routine health facility records as a basis for coverage monitoring. Two papers in the collection address this issue. Jeff Stringer and his colleagues demonstrate that in four countries in Africa, estimates of PMTCT coverage generated from facility records overestimate true population coverage in important ways. Lilu and others highlight that even in China, with relatively complete records, estimates of coverage for a range of MNCH interventions are overestimated. Routine health information systems cannot, now and probably for years to come, be relied on as an, an adequate source of coverage data to support sound program management or global monitoring. There is a fundamental problem here because Health service records reflect only those mothers and children who are already in touch with the health system and miss those who are not, 
And it is exactly those women and children that we are most um, interested and r required to reach. There are also myriad, conte whoops, myriad contextual factors to affecting challenges to respond at recall, and I have just listed several here as examples. So what did we learn about how to improve coverage measurement? We learned that trying to improve recall through memory aids like videos or displays of drugs is harder than we thought. You're going to hear um, the results, but, and there is some evidence that these things can help, but the results are mixed and more work is needed. We learned that there are potential ways to refine survey questionnaires and procedures that can help us. Some are straightforward, like adding a question on timing to distinguish C-sections that are medically inter indicated from those that are not. But some are much more complex. One strategy that the entire working group agreed upon was the need to link information on the sources of care obtained through household surveys to facility assessments of the extent and quality of the interventions delivered. There is previous experience with this with, from DHS and others, um, and what we know is that this is a lot harder to do than, than it looks, but we really think it's worth trying. We, sh we should be able to do this. Incorporating information technology into coverage management holds, coverage measurement holds promise. And this might increase the feasibility of obtaining adequate quality data from routine administrative sources. But IT is not a magic bullet, and we must work together to avoid quick fixes or the proliferation of different, often incompatible, e-health projects at country level. The role of program designers and implementers in improving coverage measurement has not been given the attention it deserves. Health workers can and should explain to mothers how important it is to keep and protect their home-based records uh, about health activities, for example, and what interventions they are receiving and why. Even special efforts to increase the salience of intervention delivery for example, having the home health worker carry a fancy bright pink bag, as was done for one project in Bangladesh, can really help improve recall. We shouldn't separate the implementers from the measures. Finally, we can and should continue to find ways to replace mother's recall with more objective methods. Home-based records are one example, although we know from experience with vaccination cards that these records are imperfect. But there are other options, including the use of health examinations and biological testing that need further ex exploration. One theme running through this collection is that the, this type of learning means that we can do better at coverage measurement, and we will. Let me just give you a flavor of the findings related to methodology without going into a detail. First, survey quality matters. Measuring coverage well is complex, and there are no shortcuts. Both sampling and non-sampling error must be taken into account in reporting and interpreting the results, and in the, in the papers we offer some concrete guidelines for how this could be done. We also need reporting for specific subpopulations, whether districts or disadvantaged groups, to make coverage data more useful to policy and program decision makers. This means larger sample sizes and therefore higher costs, but it provides good value for money in terms of more effective programs for women and children. So this brief recap of some of the findings is all that time allows, but you are going to get an in-depth look at at least uh, four of the 16 papers in the collection. The good news is that some of the results of this work have already been taken up by DHS and MIX in their survey programs. For example, the question on C-sections that I keep referring to has been changed in the current core questionnaire to increase the accuracy of reporting. In India, and we hope in future iterations of the core questionnaires, that one question has been added that can distinguish between emergency and non-emergency C-sections. 
for pneumonia, you're going to hear that there are serious problems with coverage estimates of correct treatment for childhood pneumonia. And this is one of only eight indicators on coverage that were selected for global monitoring by the Commission on Information and Accountability for Women's and Children's Health. I'm very pleased to say, therefore, that we have now added care seeking for pneumonia as an additional priority indicator so that users of the data can compare both the care seeking and the treatment and understand both better. We hope that this is just the start and that as we learn more about how best to measure and interpret coverage indicators, these findings will continue to be taken up by DHS, by MIX, and by others working to collect, analyze, and use coverage data. The bottom line here is that high-quality household survey programs are a global public good, and we must make sure that they are continued. There is an urgent learning agenda in the area of coverage measurement that's needed to provide a foundation for this ongoing improvement. Countries need these data, and we need to continue to search for ways to support shorter, lighter surveys and to strengthen the links between surveys and comparable assessments in service delivery settings. Again, the work that we are presenting to you this morning shows that we can do better. We, we know that we can do better, and with your help and support, we will.